we've recently seen some things come online, uh, customer questions, some videos come out. Don't think they quite understood our glycol chiller. So we just kind of want to go through a few things and clarification. If you're looking at buying a chiller, that's a big purchase. So we want to make sure you fully understand what you're buying. So we'll kind of start from the top, maybe go top down, address some different things with the chiller. So right up top here, we've got some of the outlets. Some of you may be wondering why we have six of these outlets and why they're right on top. So up top, we have a, a custom built controller dock where you can hook up six separate controllers. All your control will be right up top here so you can view the different temperatures of each of your fermenters right there. On lines, one of the concerns we saw was, you know, you've got a spot for six of these, but you can't fit all of your hoses, all your wires, everything through. Here, I'll move this pump for you. The small space here. Explain a little bit how that works or what the intention is behind that. This little cubby right here is pretty much just intended for the wires of your controller and your pump adapter to run through there. So just the electric cables. Any of your hoses uh, that you're hooking up to the fermenters will be ran out the back. So you just need room for up to 12 little wires. And as you can see, they don't take up much space there. So. And I think one of the cool things about this unit too, so uh, we built it so that all of the hoses can actually come through the back. This is all foam insulation through here, so if you want, you can notch out some spots. You can go all the way along this back with different lines of hoses if you needed. Um, we also have the cable management bin here that any of your extra cable, you can tuck in there and uh, you know get that tidied away. The idea is just to be able to hide some of that, prevent the clutter. The other nice thing is you can go right, left, whatever side for as many of the hoses you want. You're not tied to anything on either side, um, so it makes it really flexible that way too, So which is kind of cool. Uh, the other thing that's really nice about this too is when you go to set it up, like we made the lid so that you can just easily take the lid off and get it out of your way. Um, and then the thought with this was the same actually. There's four screws on the side. You can just pick this entire piece up and set it off to the side if you want. Makes it easy to run those hoses and the cords in and out of there. You can lean up one side, run them out. Um, but a lot of thought that went into that and I think you guys did a great job. So just really easy to use. Yeah, and I know there's been some talk online like why is our... PID down here. Um, well, one of the important things is once you set the temperature for your glycol chiller, you really shouldn't have to adjust that up and down. I mean, how often do you adjust the temperature on your glycol chiller, Preston? I mean, if I'm putting it away, I might turn it off, but if it's running, I've, I've set it at a temperature and I leave it there. Yeah. And a quick glance down just to make sure it's maintaining temp, and that's, that's really all the, the control on the PID requires. Uh, your focal point's really going to be up here. What's the temperature of my fermenter? And so you guys did a great job designing this to make sure those are all right up top where you can see them easily. Underneath the glycol chiller, we've built in some casters. And uh, as you can see, if you roll it back, they'll also have a little tab on them here. Um, if you want to lock it in place, you just step down on that tab and it'll keep it uh, firmly in place. Nobody likes to deal with plumbing issues or leaks or problems. Just, I'll put it that way, problems. Nobody likes them. So our um, reservoir for the glycol, there is no hole on the bottom. We did that intentionally. Um, the glycol in this unit, how long have we had the glycol in this? <laughs> Since we first developed them, so yeah. five, six years. Yeah, five, six years. Glycol is not something that evaporates really, it's at colder temperatures. Evaporation is usually temperature dependent. So the hotter temperature, like I'm an aquarium hobbyist at home, um, if I notice if I raise my aquarium temperature up to like 80 degrees, it is evaporating water like crazy. When you're down in like the 30, 20 degrees, you're not gonna evaporate a ton of liquid. So we've had this in here for a long time. Um, outside of, you know, spilling, moving hoses, things like that, really shouldn't go through much glycol, so you might have to top it off occasionally. But in the event you do need to drain it, what would you recommend? I just use uh, our submersible pump that'll come with the cooling kits for your um, fermenter and, you know, just disconnect it from the fermenter and pump it out into a bucket or wherever you're going to go with it. Pretty easy, you know, it doesn't require any heavy lifting or anything crazy, so just use the same pump you already have, move your plug right over to here, after, after you move the outlet hose to where you want the glycol to go, uh, but it's really that simple. So, a couple things with the reservoir. Uh, it's got a large capacity, so if you're hooking up more tanks, you really shouldn't have to top that off too much. I mean, the hoses do hold a decent amount of volume, but we've got a large, uh, large volume reservoir inside the unit that is also insulated. So I know that there's been some talk online. Uh, ours definitely is insulated, always has been. It's really hard to see if it's insulated because there's actually a cover under there that contains all the insulation around the tank. Um, but for those who wonder, definitely is insulated. So as we talk about performance of the chiller, um, size of the reservoir, we've kind of talked about this. So hopefully you guys have a good idea of how to set that up. We actually um, upgraded our chiller to a half horse. 
So we're going to get a little bit more into that in another video uh, with Mike from Bitter Reality and John Blickman. They were both in, did a Q&A session with yourself, which I think yep. it was a lot of fun. So yes. definitely want to check out that video. That'll answer a lot of your questions as you go to look to buy a chiller. So hopefully this has been helpful, insightful, clear up any misconceptions. Uh, the goal here at Blickman, I mean, these engineers put a lot of time and work into this, a lot of thought trying to make these products better for you guys. Uh, they do a great job. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, send a link out to somebody if, if there's somebody that's got questions or is in the market. So uh, appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to watch the video. Thank you.